everyone. Welcome to the Purple People Podcast. I am Kyle West, and alongside me, as always, is Adam Carlson. How you doing today, Hi, Adam? Oh, I'm doing good. Once again, I'd like to invite you all to join in our conversations on the Facebook fan page, and go check us out on Twitter. So what do we have on tap for today, Kyle? Well, um, I want to make a quick mention here of the new intro and outro that I got put together. Um, We're going to be rolling out some changes here in the coming weeks, and you should also hopefully notice a improvement in sound quality. Um, For the first time, this podcast is going to be in stereo format. So stereo. Yes, that is a big deal, at least to us, that we, we are finally getting little issues taken care of. This is our present to you. Yeah. Merry <laughs> early Christmas. <laughs> uh, it's something we've been working on for a while, and we're glad we could finally bring it to you. So let's talk about this last preseason game here. Let's jump right into it. Yeah, speaking of presents, um, the Vikings gave us a couple and a lot of coal uh, in, yeah, this, yeah. in this final preseason game. Uh, So let's uh, kick this off with our winners and losers, and then we'll go into our full recap of the of the game. So who do you got for your first winner for the week? Uh, This is a tough decision for me because I have two people that I thought really, really shined. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with the kind of obvious one. I'm going to go with Jarius Wright. Uh, He finally showed up in the passing game, caught some passes, had good presence on returns. I really liked what I saw of him today, and I want to see more of that. Yeah, I was a big fan of what he had to do. Um, my winner is I also got a wide receiver, Devin Aroma Shadu. Um, this guy needed a big game in the worst possible way. And Definitely. he finally uh, stepped up to the plate. With how competitive the wide receiver position is going to be in these final cuts, it's it was really important for these guys to step up and play big. Yeah, totally. Now let's get to some guys who didn't step up to the plate. Who's your first loser uh, for the... Uh, all right, my, my first loser, I have a guy that I think played worse than this guy. <laughs> okay. But the reason why this guy is my loser is because I had high hopes for him, and he let me down so bad, and that's Reggie Jones. Okay. The guy, I saw flashes of brilliance in the previous games, and this game I just saw bad coverage, bad penalties, holding in the end zone, just ridiculous things. I, I want to see him succeed, but he can't be doing things like that. I I agree, and I have uh, two guys who should not be be doing what they did on the field. That um, they missed some tackles, and it led to an 80-yard touchdown score. Uh, Larry Dean and Eric Frampton. Uh, that's my combination of those two because I <laughs> I could not pick one because they both completely screwed up uh, a, a a number of times throughout this game. Larry Dean was my other loser. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just to let you know. Yeah. Now, we probably will not be talking about Larry Dean past tomorrow for obvious reasons. Yes, the Vikings are going to have their uh, final cuts coming up where we got to get down to the uh, 53-man roster. That's true, by Friday the 31st. Yes. So let's jump into some game observations here. Okay. Um, yeah, the first thing that I wanted to mention that we already touched a little bit upon was our wide receivers. Um, we were we had you know pounded the fist on the table here and said that we need someone to step up to the plate, and we right. we finally seen just catches from a number of different people from Jarius Wright, who uh, six catches, 122 yards, and a touchdown. Um, big game. Yeah, big game for him. Unfortunately, he did sprain his ankle. So we hope that it's just kind of a a minor thing and that he can... From what I've read, it doesn't seem like it's a high ankle sprain or anything really serious. So that's nothing to really worry about too much there. Yeah, otherwise, like we said, Devin Aroma Shadu had a good game. Steven Burton had a couple good catches out there. So it was an an all-around improvement from what we've seen in the past couple of weeks. Right, but one consistency again that we saw was Joe Webb struggling. Yeah, Joe Webb was actually one of my names that I had wrote down for a possible loser. And I I hate to say that about Joe Webb, but he has struggled. And I wonder if he is just in over his head with them giving him, you know, the full playbook and saying, here's what it takes to be a quarterback. And I I don't know. I'm starting to question that a little bit. He's still struggling with the reads and the progressions. Uh, And I, I don't know. I'm. 
I know he's dealing with a substandard offensive line out there. I know that. But still, with his mobility and his ability to get out of situations, it shouldn't bother him as much as it has. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe he's a player who's just uh, a a big game situation kind of guy. And with it being preseason, maybe for whatever reason he doesn't play as hard. But when regular season comes, you know, he he kicks in that extra gear. Maybe that's just kind of part of his DNA. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. But one thing we know is that we can expect consistency out of Sage Rosenfels. Yeah, Sage, uh, he he struggled a little bit with the offensive line, giving up a couple sacks and pressure on him. Uh, There's one guy that uh, we're going to talk about here in just a bit who uh, led a couple big sacks to a couple different quarterbacks tonight. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I thought Sage looked looked pretty good. Uh, He will be the number two guy behind Christian Ponder, I believe. I, I think so, too. I think we'll see him come in. Webb, I like what he does, but he's not quite there yet. Another guy that's not quite there yet, MBT, McLeod Bethel-Thompson. He played well. He threw an interception. Uh, He's a good potential guy. I like what I see out of him. But right now, he's a practice squad body until he improves and he's able to move up the rankings there. That interception, though, uh, that was not so much him putting the ball in the wrong spot. Uh, that that defender for Houston jumped and made just a hell of an a, a catch on that route. So that, oh, it was an excellent play on the ball. Yeah, definitely. So that wasn't completely like he threw just an absolute horrid interception. I had liked what I seen from MBT, um, but you're right. He's a he's a good practice squad guy. Yeah, if Vikings do end up cutting him to make room for the 53. I hope that he clears so they can get him on the practice squad. I wouldn't be surprised if another team picks him up um, if he does get cut from the team. You know, I can think of a number of NFL teams that that could would want to take a look at him. You look at someone like possibly Miami or uh, even Buffalo. I mean, their backup quarterback situation isn't the best. Um, right. You look at Arizona. You know, Arizona needs help and competition going out there so there's a number of people that could could give him a look right but i'm just hoping he clears and and can come back to the vikings so that he can compete again next year i am too now one of the things that really blew my mind during the game was the third down running back situation now i watched the game very closely to try to figure out who was gonna be the guy that would take his game up a notch and fight for that spot and earn it and after watching that game, I still have no clue. Well, I can narrow it down to two names here for you, Adam. It's either going to be between Jordan Todman or Matt Asiata. Uh, Lex Hilliard, I do not believe, has it. He had, a, he had a decent enough game for a fourth preseason, but I don't think he's shown anything previously to warrant him sticking on the roster so it's going to be between i think todman and asiata that's kind of my feeling for it see i like watching asiata i do but the vikings already have such big running backs big fullbacks i mean even their running backs look like fullbacks Mm -hmm. so i'm wondering if they're going to take a guy like todman just because he has that size and can be a change of pace rather than the bruiser Although don't get me lo- don't get me wrong on this, I love the big physical style of football. I love it, they, but that change of pace can make a big difference. They could, and the tough part about this decision is that Jordan Todman is going to bring the speed. Matt Asiata brings the ability to play two positions. He can play he brings run- the pain. He can play running back and he can play fullback. So that saves them a roster spot because you know how precious that fifty three. Those 53 spots are. So it, it's a pretty tough decision, I think, between those two players. My personal feelings, I would go with Matt Asiata. But if they do end up taking Jordan Todman, there's a pretty good shot that I think Matt will make it onto the practice squad. I hope so. But another thing I noticed from the game is these running backs did struggle because of the poor play from the offensive line. Yeah, there was uh, a, a lot of those offensive lines. Let's just go ahead and talk about uh, one guy right here, number 67, Austin Pazer. Um, this guy, he got blown by twice. 
And yeah. uh, he nearly got Rosenfels and MBT just killed both times. Uh, there's there no- were times he was just standing there. And the defender was running around him, and he was just reaching his arms out, hoping to slow him down a touch, not moving his feet at all. It's It was embarrassing. Yeah, you know what it looked like? It looked like a glitch in, like, Madden 2003 for the PlayStation 2 or whatever. <laughs> oh, no. Like, his AI, I think, was set down way, way, way too low. <laughs> Another group that was struggling is, was on the defensive side of the ball, and that was the front seven against the run. Yeah, we've seen this in the uh, the first game where Minnesota rested all the starters, and we've seen it again in this one where we just got destroyed up front in the running game, and uh, I, I don't know quite what's going on with that. I don't know either. There's a lot of talent there in the backups. I don't understand why the defensive line is giving up those big holes because they have the talent there. My opinion is that it is based on the linebacker play. There's only one linebacker in that game that really stood out to me. And you know who that is, right, Kyle? Oh, of course. <laughs> it's Audie Cole. Audie Cole. Always on. It's the Audie Cole show here. <laughs> he was in on a lot of plays and making tackles. He was where he needed to be. Audie Cole's going to make this 53, folks. Oh, no doubt. I mean, they would be a fool to cut him. Uh, he's a, he's still a raw talent and has a lot to learn, but he, Very. he will learn, he will get there and he will be a darn good player. I think for the Vikings, a couple years down the line. Yeah, if they keep holding on to him, he will work his way up. Oh yeah. From back up to, you know, to starter, to a regular rotation. That's what you're going to see out of him. And that's what I love. The corners. Now, Bobby Felder, <laughs> Reggie Jones. Come on guys. This was their opportunity to shine. This is where they can step up and make themselves those paychecks, you know, those those contracts that they need. That's what they needed. But I didn't see it. You know who the most impressive corner was in, in this game? Chris Carr. Chris Carr. Yeah, Chris Carr, which is saying something because I have not been a fan of his work previously. <laughs> he played pretty well in this game. He, he did. You, you got to hand it to him a little bit. And I understand that, you know, this is your usual thing with, oh, but they were backups. Yeah, they were backups. They were. But either way, Carr did play pretty well. The rest of the corners, not so much. Then we can move on to special teams if if you want to talk about that. Yeah, let's talk a bit about uh, our kicker, uh, Blair Walsh. What okay. is it with Blair missing the first field goal attempt of every game that he goes out to do. Because I think in each preseason game, the first time he goes to kick a field goal, he's missed it. Well, that was over a 40-yard kick, which isn't a gimme by any means. I believe it was from 43, right? Uh, yeah, somewhere around in there. But this is a guy that we're talking about made a crazy 72-yard field goal <laughs> <laughs> in practice. So, I, I I mean, maybe you take it a little bit for granted that he's going to make everything. But uh, I, I, you don't want to see him missing any any field goals. And it, it always seems to be the first one that gets him. Yeah, but he, it's a learning experience for him. I know a lot of people are already frustrated with him saying that he's going to be missing a lot of field goals this year. I'm not as concerned as they are. No, I try not to get too worked up over that because I like Blair and I know that he's going to turn into a good player. So, um, one thing I wanted to to mention here was uh, Jarius Wright on kickoff returns. Uh, what he looked do, good. What do you think? I, I like that uh, quite a bit from him. Competition. He looked pretty natural. I, I liked seeing him there. Yeah, I know they said that they're giving that to Percy, but what do you think? A little bit of competition. You know who I didn't like seeing back there was who? Stephen Burt. <laughs> he looks so uncomfortable returning kicks or punts. He does. He, he just didn't look like he belonged back there. He does, and he is a player that I am rooting for to make it onto this team. So you wish that, you know, if he could be extra versatile in kickoff or punt returns, that would help him out so much. But yeah, I just don't don't quite know. And now it's time for your weekly "I told you so" moment. I warned you guys about Trenton Holiday. 
I seen that, and as soon as he returned that one, I was like, Adam is going to have a field day on our show for this <laughs> one. Once he got up to speed, there wasn't anybody catching him. No. Nope. It was just unbelievable. He, it was like he had afterburners. He blew through our special teams unit, and listening to Paul Allen try to make excuses for the team, saying... <laughs> oh, well, you know, these are guys that are not used to playing it, and they don't quite know what they're doing. And, oh, okay, that's probably true, but by the fourth game of the preseason, they've had a lot of time to practice, and they've had some game experience, and they should they should know their coverage is better than that, I would think. Practice is one thing, but when you're trying to figure out what angle to take against a guy like Trenton Holiday, who's running that fast... Yeah. You can make a bad decision really fast, and you can be out of the play before you're even in it. Yeah, what do we got to do to get him on the team, by the way? <laughs> he uh, he was actually picked up as a free agent from the, from Houston. No he ki- was available. No kidding? Yeah. Yeah, we should have gave him a look. I got my first look at him thanks to Madden 12. Thank you, Madden. Well, you know, that Madden teaching us all about football for a number <laughs> of years. <laughs> you know it. Yeah. Now... There were a couple injuries this week. Yep. We, we mentioned... already mentioned uh, Jay Wright's twisted ankle. Yep. Uh, Marvin Mitchell also twisted his ankle. Again, they don't think it's high ankle. Nothing serious. DeMarcus Love tweaked his shoulder. I'm not sure what that means. I'm just passing it on. But added to the now healthy list is John Carlson and Jeff Schwartz, which means we will probably see them in week one action. And that's exciting. Yeah, I'm excited to see what John Carlson can do. Uh, you know, he's a player that Minnesota gave quite a bit of money to, um, all things considered. And True, he was quite an investment. He needs to be productive for the team because, like I've mentioned previously, there's a lot of competition at that tight end spot. We've got guys who I guarantee you, whoever gets cut, will be picked up by another team in a matter oh, of yeah. in a matter of no time. So John Carlson, uh, the pressure is on for him. Uh, he's got to come out, and he's got to perform, and he's got to look good for the squad. And he's going to be a little behind because of how long you know he's been hurt. He's got to get up to speed, and he's got to do it quick. And he's got to stay healthy. Yes, he, it is imperative that he stays healthy. Now, you mentioned roster cuts. The first round of roster cuts already happened. The Vikings are down to 75. They did that before this game. Mm-hmm. Offensively, they cut Bridger Bush, Derek Coleman, Grant Cook. Levi Horn, Kamar Jordan, A.J. Love, Kerry Taylor, and Brian Walters on offense. Defensively, Solomon Elim... <laughs> Eliminian. <ahead>. Solomon Eliminian. <laughs> Corey Gatewood, Anthony Jacobs, Tyler Neeson, Ernest Owosu, Ted Powell, and Chris Stroud. Did any of these cuts really surprise you, Kyle? Huh? Kerry Taylor was a surprise for me just because of Minnesota needing competition at that wide receiver spot. I liked what I seen from Kerry Taylor... Um, he, he actually had um, been on the Patriots, and he got cut, ended up on Minnesota, and then Minnesota cut him, and the Patriots picked him back up. He played in uh, their preseason game and was making a couple decent catches for them. He was one of those guys that I really feel like if they just would have gave him at least until final, you know, this, this final cut down coming up, yeah. He he could have made plays out there for us tonight, and they they should have gave him more of a look. Uh, I I really believe I that one. Other than that, uh, Solomon Elaminian was kind of my guy that I was rooting for to make the team, and he he got hurt. Um, I believe that's why he got cut. And there's I think the injury took him off for that too. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Um, to his maybe I don't know if you want to say benefit is the right word for it. But uh, with him being hurt, I doubt any other team is going to sign him. So maybe there's a possibility that Minnesota cut him early, knowing that he's hurt, will be able to pick him back up and put him on the practice squad. I, th- I think that was their hopeful thinking. Yeah, and I- I'm assuming that's how that's going to fill out with with him. Um, like you say, we've got the next round of cuts that are going to be coming up. We should know about those by uh, w- what day was that? Friday, August 31st is when the cuts will be done. Yeah, so we will know about that really shortly, what our first, what our initial 53-man roster is going to look like. Because keeping in mind, there's going to be a whole bunch of players that are going to come out on the open market. And 
Minnesota is going to be looking at everyone, and they are going to be comparing those newly released players against our current roster and seeing if there is any upgrades available. So there is the possibility that the initial 53 that we see is not necessarily going to be the 53 that we will use going into Jacksonville. Very true. And remember that Minnesota is early on the waiver wire. Yes, we are third on the waiver wire list. So if the Colts pass over and the Rams pass over, it the comes Vikings to us. have the pick right there. Yep. Now, we, we on the show will not be talking a whole lot about the second round of cuts. You'll have to go check out the Facebook page or the Twitter account for all that. But we will be doing a show next week where we're going to be highlighting each and every game that's coming up on the regular season schedule, giving our predictions, what to look for. It's going to be a fun show. We're hoping to have a special guest. Mm -hmm. And we're excited about that show. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Like Adam said, we're going to go through and we're going to do predictions for um, all the games of the season. And uh, it should be a lot of fun to see how we, how much we agree and how much we uh, don't agree on which games we're going to win and lose. That's true. And that, that's part of the fun part of seeing, seeing how people think the different teams match up, who's going to win what, how many points here. It's a lot of fun. It's probably going to be one of our most fun shows yet, so I recommend you tune in next week. So let's enter our final rants here. Do you got anything for us this week, Kyle? Uh, no, I think I'm pretty good. I don't really have anything to rant about. We're, we're st- I'm still a little bit in preseason mode, so I can kind of take things a little bit more with a grain of salt. Once we hit regular season, there will be plenty of things to rant about because, folks, that's when it counts and that's when it matters. And it's turning into a rant right now, I guess. <laughs> but uh, my rant is that it's preseason. Try to keep everything into perspective and to not get too crazy with with your thoughts on you know what the team looks like or doesn't look like. I, I think your rant earlier, too, on Austin Pazor really really helped cement that, too. So one <laughs> at the end of the show here probably isn't necessary. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but Austin, I mean, I realize that it's probably this kid's dream to be playing in the NFL. And I'm glad that he's had a chance to do it, but he doesn't need to do it on the Minnesota Vikings any longer. No. Which brings me to my final rant. Carly Ray Jespin. Now, I know that name doesn't doesn't sound familiar to a lot of you, but you all know her song, Call Me Maybe. I know you've heard it, right, Kyle? I am horribly out of touch with pop culture, current pop culture stuff. You've got to be kidding me. I have never heard this song. Like, I, I literally don't know the person that you just mentioned. I would I, am, I would have to. I'm Google. actually disappointed and, like, happy for you. I, I don't know which one. See, I don't know. Our listeners probably don't know, but uh, I do a lot of writing on the side where I cover older nostalgic topics from the 80s and 90s, you know, stuff from when I was a kid. And so I'm very ingrained in looking back at older pop culture. I'm not interested in any of the newer stuff whatsoever because it's all a bunch of horse crap to me. <laughs> <laughs> so Carly Rae Jespin doesn't quite tickle your fancy. Uh, no, it sounds like a bunch of horse crap. <laughs> Now, her hit song, Call Me Maybe, was used in a parody video of a fantasy football draft where a person was trying to decide whether or not to draft Adrian Peterson at the end of the first round. Now, the show was pretty funny. It's a short video, and I got some laughs out of it. And I'm going to be posting it to the Facebook wall so you guys can all see it if you haven't. But there is some funny stuff in there. You're going to love some of the passes there that Tim Tebow throws. It's good stuff. Uh, I, on that note, we should uh, we should probably wrap it up a bit. Yeah, we're probably running probably long for this show. So uh, yeah, let's. Um, I would like to thank everyone for listening to the show and remind everybody to uh, join in on the discussions on Facebook. Um, we, we love hearing have, from uh, everyone. Polls going too. Um, we, we, I'm constantly posting more discussions, more polls, um, surveys. I, I got lots of stuff going on on. Uh, on the fan page, facebook.com slash Podcast. That's us. Go there, take the surveys, take the polls, uh, comment. We'd love all that. Uh, I wanted to thank everybody for listening, and I wanted to remind Minnesota, 
to do one thing, and that's stay classy.